Now we shall look at the energy of harmonic motion. And what is interesting is it's a transfer between um, kinetic and potential. So all the energy ideas we talked about before we see illustrated when we look at the harmonic oscillator. So again, even though we're watching something oscillate up and down, gravity is really just an offset. So to avoid that confusion at all, though, I'll again draw it sideways. So here we go. So let's say that the spring is like that, spring constant k, and the mass is like that, mass m. Okay? And let's imagine we start move, putting this into motion, and we give it some amplitude a. So we know we could describe this with a sine function, a sine 2 pi f t, if we wanted to. But what we care about right now is the total energy. So E mechanical is how we refer to it in our energy week. Here I'm just going to say that is just the total energy it has. I'd rather label it E total to remind you that this is a constant total amount of energy. It has to be equal to however much kinetic it has plus however much potential it has. And the only mechanisms we have right now are for kinetic is just the velocity, the only mechanism you ever have. And for potential, all we have is the spring. Since we're not moving up and down in a gravitational field, we're just thinking of um, the energy uh, moving that way. So in real time, what really happens is you have 1 half mv squared. So the velocity goes to some maximum value and to zero, but at any instant in time, it has an instantaneous velocity. So it has an instantaneous kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. And the energy of the spring, we know, is 1 half kx squared. Where again, if this is zero where it likes to rest, and this is the x-axis, then as you deviate from zero, you have energy 1 half kx squared. And you don't really see it here, but if we now make plots of the motion and the energy, you kind of see what happens. So here, I'm going to plot the motion. So here is x as a function of time. And then we're going to plot the kinetic energy. And then we're going to plot the potential energy. Okay. So let's see. So the position, we'll describe it with a sign. And we'll have it um, go through a few cycles like that. Okay. And I'll draw a little dotted line coming down to help us line up all the plots. This is usually a good idea. All right, that's where the zeros are uh, for, the, ooh, for the position. All right. So that's x. And let's plot k. And let's plot u. Okay. And let's see. So we know kinetic energy is what? It is uh, 1 half mv squared, where v is the speed. doesn't matter which way it's going. V is the speed. Here, where do we have the biggest velocity? We say we have the biggest velocity when it crosses the axis. Right? So here you can see the slope really big. Here the slope is 0. Here the slope is really big. Here the slope is 0. So what we're actually going to have is a high kinetic energy when we start. And then by the time you get halfway to these, it's 0 again. And then here, the uh, velocity is negative, but when you square it, it becomes positive. So suddenly our kinetic energy is up here again. And then here there's no velocity, it's down here. And what you see, if you fill in all these points, is it does oscillate. It makes a sinusoid <coughs> just like the position, but it's not the same frequency. Because it never goes negative, the positive parts and negative parts of this curve have to both be on top, have to both be positive. So you actually get something oscillating even faster. So the kinetic energy curve oscillates at twice the frequency of the position curve. We could look at the potential energy, 1 half kx squared, and that's really going to follow x, right? So here it's 0, here it's 0. Uh, here x gets really big, kx squared, it must get really big there. Here it must get 0 here. But then here x becomes negative. But it's 1 of kx squared. So you square the negative, it becomes positive. So potential energy, the same thing. It never actually goes negative. It only stays in the positive direction. Or the, you only get positive values because of the way uh, we defined it for a spring. So it kind of looks like this. 
It looks like that. And then if I were to plot the sum of k plus u, which I ran out of room to do below, but here I'll plot it for you to the side, e total k plus u, it's a line. Right? You can see wherever this one is high, this one is low. Whenever this one is low, this one is high. You add them together, and the total energy is constant. So the energy oscillates between uh, kinetic and potential. And at some points it's all kinetic, and at some points it's all potential, but the total is constant. So if we look at the mass on the spring move, we can kind of imagine that this is true. So the point where it is all potential is when it stops and there's no kinetic. Right? So there's no kinetic, for example, at the bottom. It briefly stops, but that's where you have the most displacement of the spring. So where you have a zero velocity, you have your maximum displacement of the spring. And when it goes through zero is when it has the maximum speed, but that's also when it's got the zero displacement from its rest position. So everything fits. So if you're asked to calculate the energy of an oscillator, you got to keep these things in mind. One thing to keep in mind is the maximum values, the maximum kinetic and the maximum potential, those exchange. But you can actually get each individual value if you know the position of the velocity as a function of time.